Hello, this is BBoss1997, where we show you some pretty cool stuff. Now today I'm going to show you the NEC Multisync MT1030 Plus video projector. This particular projector was manufactured in, I believe, 1999. And it's actually really solid. Got it yesterday. And uh, it's served me well so far. So let me give you a quick run through. <clears throat> so it is actually very large. Just for uh, comparison, uh, here is a coffee mug. And there's my hand. This is actually a really beefy chunk of AV technology. So let me uh, just show you the controls we have here. <clears throat> the menu button right here brings up a menu for different uh, different settings you can have and this is used to navigate the menu button and this is used to enter in anything you want this is interesting because I'll uncover the lens right here there as you might notice there are no rings that you can manually adjust the focus and zoom and that's where these buttons are for this adjusts the zoom and for those of you that don't, that don't know the zoom is the control for how big the image on the screen is so if you have a screen like that you can control how big the image is so that you can fit it on the screen perfectly. Status and power lights, indicator lights, right here. On-off switch. Actually, there are two on-off switches. This is the main power switch. This is actually this is a big switch that actually controls the power coming in from here. And this is um, this is the switch to like the electronics. So you can turn this on without having the actual projector on. <clears throat> That's the switch that you use if you want to disconnect the projector and move it around. But other than that, you just use this. So there's the controls, and on this side panel here is all of our inputs. This is the input that I'm going to use. I'm going to be using most often because I'm. It's going to be. It's going to be coming from a DVD player like that. So we have our video input. This has its own built-in speakers like many projectors here and here. Left, right. Super video input, left, right. RGB for computers, input, out, this is an output, and this is input one. PC control, mouse output, remote control input, if, if you have the remote control. The guy who shipped it to me did not include the remote control. Audio, input two. Input one and input two, and you can select that on the menu. Now, getting down to the nuts and bolts of this, this is an intake filter. And what's interesting about this is all the heat comes out of here. So this is the intake, but not the output. The heat exhaust actually comes out, out of the front, which is actually really interesting, and I'll tell you why. Um, this is a carry handle, and where I had the projector before I started recording this video is right here. It's actually a very perfect fit. It fits just perfectly in there. What's nice about this carry handle is not only is it making it easier to carry around, but it keeps any solid flat surfaces away from this intake vent. So that if you put it up against a wall or anything like that, or like that, a tight space, there won't be any obstructions. So it can take in as much air as it needs and expel it out the front. So that's interesting. And uh, <clears throat> what's interesting is also I think the reason I don't know why I was doing that. The reason that these things are on the front is probably because you can either stack the projectors or as I'm going to do in a couple seconds, put like a DVD player or so, some other kind of video source on top of it. Here we have an infrared receiver, another infrared receiver, and I don't know if there's one back there. But it's, it ha it's covered in infrared receivers. There's another one right there for, so that you can aim a remote from anywhere. Like I said, I don't have a remote right now. So why don't I just uh, power this thing up? Oh, one afterthought, it does have a lens cover. This is actually a pretty hefty lens. It's, it's not, too, not too bad. It's my finger. It's a pretty big lens. All right, so I have the main power switch off. And in this case, when I turn the power switch on, it powers up. 
Now, because it is being powered by a halide lamp, it does take a little bit of time for it to warm up. And you can begin to see the blue. Now, because I have the projector not in the place where it would normally be, the screen is going to be off-center. So you can see things begin to come through on there. So here's what happens when you press the menu bu button. little menu pops up over there. You can adjust the images, press enter. Brightness, I have it on a little bit more than half. Contrast, color, tint, sharpness, image mode, normal. The keystone is interesting. Um, if you have your projector... If you have your projector aimed from either above or below, no, actually, most likely below, you can adjust, you can square the image. I don't know if you can exactly see it, but that image is being adjusted. So if you have it aiming from below, the top is going to be wider than the bottom, but with this keystone, with this keystone feature, you can actually square it even if the projector isn't aimed directly at the screen. We can go back to menu, power menu, Let's see what power menu is. Power off, on, I never use any of those. And I'll demonstrate the zoom. Zoom is right here. Zoom, picture gets bigger. In this case, I don't want the picture all that big. That's the maximum it can go. Picture, smaller. Interesting. Focus, now, in order to use the focus, I pull up the menu as a reference point to see how sharp the image is. Interesting, huh? Here's the front of the projector. Lens. Heat coming out of here. Pretty bright image, I'll say that right now. You can probably just see the edge of the LCD panel in there. Yeah. So the intake is here. And why don't we run this thing through its paces and play a video. So, let me give you, show you how nicely this can stack. Now, because all the controls, this is a very well designed unit, as you might have noticed, lamps are here. Um, because all the controls are over to the corner, you can stack things on top of it like I just did. DVD player. Let's put this through its paces. You may not be able to see, like I said, because, because the screen isn't exactly centered, it'll be a little weird. But for right now, we have to select the source menu. Oh, silly me, I haven't even plugged it in. <clears throat> okay. So here's where we plug the video input in right here. Right there. And it should automatically detect it. And we have a little bit of uh, Indiana Jones here. Now, it's a little unusual because it's daytime. But. It is nice, it is still very bright, even though it's daytime. So here it is. So all in all, it's a very well designed unit, NEC, they make cinema projectors as well. And uh, I, ju I just, I really, I personally love the thing very good picture even though it's from the 90s it's still the picture still is very nice so that's a quick overview on the NEC Multisync MT1030 Plus video projector and uh, I'll see you in the next video